Now, this week, we're going to find out more about Pluto than we've ever known before, because a NASA probe will pass within a few thousand miles of the far-off world. Here's our science correspondent, Thomas Moore. New Horizons is about 2.8 billion miles from Earth right now, 30 times the distance between the Earth and the Sun. It's taken nine and a half years to pass Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. And on Tuesday, it's going to fly within 8,000 miles of Pluto's surface. Last week, it sent back the most detailed image ever seen while it was about five million miles from its target, revealing patches of dark and light that scientists can't yet fully explain. And by Tuesday, it'll be sending back pictures 500 times more detailed, with a camera able to pick out features just a few hundred metres across. What it won't do, though, is land. Travelling at more than 30,000 miles an hour, there's no way it could slow down and stop. So its window to capture information as it flies by will only be a few hours long. It's information that astronomers badly want. Pluto was only discovered in 1930, and all we know is that it's mostly made of rock and ice and is one-third smaller than Earth's moon. Debate still rages as to whether it should be defined as a planet or something less significant. And Pluto's not the only object that'll be photographed. Its five known moons will also be surveyed. But the story doesn't end there. New Horizons will collect so much data that it'll take 16 months to transmit it all back to Earth as it continues deeper into space. It'll also join Voyagers 1 and 2 to become an active interstellar probe, still sending information back to Earth as they slip out of our solar system and into the universe beyond. The universe beyond. Well, space expert Sarah Crudus is here with us now. First of all, Pluto, it's not a planet anymore, is it? Well, I think it's all semantics because um, when this mission launched um, back in the start of 2006, it was still a planet and Pluto had three moons and it was one of nine planets in our solar system. And fast forward a few more months after that and Pluto was downgraded to uh, dwarf planets, which mm. means it's not big enough to be a planet, but it's really semantics. And the reason behind that was we discovered other Pluto-sized objects um, at the same distance as Pluto in a region of the solar system known as the Kuiper Belt, which is basically the remains of the formation of the solar system, which was extended further away from the sun than our rocky planets are. So it has been downgraded, but certainly Alan Stern, who's the guy behind this Pluto mission, would argue that Pluto is still a planet. And I think certainly oh, right. with our understanding of the solar system and the universe, we try and put labels on things, but we can't because things don't fall into categories as much as we'd like them to. So hopefully we're going to get pictures as uh, soon as Tuesday. Yeah. What more could we potentially learn? Well, we don't know anything about Pluto. That's the most exciting thing. I mean, it was discovered 85 years ago. Um, and what's so exciting about this mission is this is the furthest we can explore with spacecraft. So this is the furthest humans can reach out at the moment into the solar system or the universe and actually try and understand something about these other worlds. So that's what's incredibly exciting. We know Pluto's got an atmosphere, which actually, even though it's about a sixth of the size of the Earth, the actual planet itself, the atmosphere extends to the same size as the Earth. So it's got this huge, very, very thin atmosphere. We know there might be an ocean on Pluto. We need to find out more about that. There might even be the potential for a, a neon river or nitrogen snow. So really oh, wow. science fiction things that we don't understand about. And one of the main things about this mission and throughout space missions is we don't know anything. And the only thing we do know is that we're likely to be surprised. And we're only actually going to get two hours flying by Pluto because it's unfortunately we're going very, very fast and Pluto is very tiny. We can't actually slow the spacecraft down. But when we get there, we'll be around 7,000 and 7,800 kilometers or miles above Pluto, and we should be able to see things in the same detail that you can see rivers with satellites on Earth. So it's going to be a very, very detailed mission. There's going to be a long wait for scientists. So every picture we're getting back at the moment as we approach Pluto is already the best ever picture of Pluto. Mm. Um, the pictures we get on Tuesday, which will actually come through on Wednesday, we, it takes four hours with that far away for the signal to come back. So even though the probe will arrive at lunchtime, there'll then be a two-hour wait while it's switched off right. to concentrate on the mission, and it'll be another four hours before we start to get those pictures back. So it's incredibly exciting, and it's just this new frontier in space exploration that we've got to appreciate because there's no missions like this on the card at the moment. So this mission was first thought of in the late 80s, and no one's thinking or putting any money towards new missions to be launched relatively soon. So it is really a once in a lifetime mm. opportunity. It's a big chance. And yet, great information coming back already before it even reaches Pluto. You were saying earlier, intriguingly, 
fascinating things happening around Jupiter. Yeah, um, well, on the way to Jupiter, to, uh, in order to get there, it's a very, very long journey, but this has been one of the fastest ever missions we've sent across the solar system. So it launched, it was the fastest ever, ever launch we've seen of a space mission. Um, and then you can't use fuel, you can't use solar panels. So in order to get there, we use gravity, or gravity assist from other planets. And the probe, the New Horizons 2015 probe, had to use Jupiter's gravity, and that actually caused the orbit of Jupiter around the sun to slow down ever slightly. So a year on Jupiter is now ever so slightly slower because of this mission. All very, very exciting. We look forward to seeing those uh, images. Slightly delayed, possibly yeah, on Tuesday. Yeah, and red we as well. Them. That's a big surprise that Pluto is red. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Sarah, thank <laughs> you very much. Sarah, thanks for thank coming you. in. Thank you. OK, let's see what's happening with the weather now with Isabel.